After the wedding in Mumbai, I immediately flew up north to the region of Uttarakhand. I flew to Jolly Grand Airport, which is situated between Dehradun and Rishikesh. And at that point, I still haven't decided what to do or where to go. Also, I haven't made any bookings for any accommodation, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna sleep tonight. But that's the way I like to travel. Running out of time, I have to make a decision. I either have to find a way to get to Dehradun up north, or go to Rishikesh in the south. I figure I just go ahead and make way to Rishikesh, since Dehradun doesn't seem like there's much going on around there. So normally, the bus would, you would get here? Yeah. And you just wave it down. This is for bus. No public bus. Oh, so how do you get to... Uh... This public bus. Ah, okay. So you just like wave it down. Yeah. So I asked around how to get to Rishikesh. They told me the best way to get there is by a taxi stand where they would charge me about 800 rupees, which would be equivalent to about 400 baht. After having several bad experiences with getting ripped off, I decided to try to take the public transportation. However, there were no buses accessible from the airport. I had to walk about 20 minutes to the main road, which is why you saw me walking earlier. While walking, I got picked up by a no-labeled taxi, which I thought was really careless of me to do that. But the guy offered to take me into town for only 200 rupees, like 100 baht. So I went with that. It turned out alright and I got there safe. But I wouldn't recommend doing that on a normal basis, especially when you're traveling alone or not familiar with where you're going. What he's telling me is that Rishikesh is a very holy city. Consuming any kinds of meat and any alcohol are strictly prohibited. All I'm thinking in my head at the time is, fuck me, I'm gonna have alcohol withdrawal problems. So after arriving in town, I found out that the driver is not going to take me all the way to where I needed to go, which is the Lakshmanjula bridge, which is where all the tourists are hanging out. From here, he recommended me to take the tuk-tuk further on, to which it would cost 150 rupees, which is not bad at all. I'm sure it costs way less than that, but I'm a tourist so they can just try to overcharge me, obviously. I gotta say, no matter where you are in India, you're gonna face insane traffic. People driving recklessly, cars parked where they're not supposed to be parked, people walking in disregards of oncoming vehicles, cows blocking the road, and what gets to me most is the non-stop honkathon where, I kid you not, I probably heard honking every 5 to 10 seconds. It really gets to you. So after about an hour of being in the car and the tuk-tuk, I have finally arrived. So I got dropped off near the bridge and I still need to find my way over. Thanks to modern technology, I don't have to be completely clueless. You can download a map of an area to your phone from Google beforehand and use it offline, which really helps. Anyways, I still gotta find a roof over my head for the night. A friend of mine recommended me to check out this place called The Shif Shakti. Heard it's a really cool place, and that's the only plan so far I have for accommodation. I haven't made any reservations, but I hope by the time I get there, there would be something still available. I'm getting closer to where I needed to be. You can tell because I'm starting to see more souvenir, hippie, and fancy stores, 
made from local organic this, vegan that, blah, 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 blah. From experience, I know for sure that the locals don't use any of that. And here we are, the Lakshman Chula, which translates to the Lakshman Bridge. It's one of the iconic landmarks here in Rishikesh. The bridge was constructed in 1929. Before it existed, people would have to cross the Ganga or the Ganges River by a rope or go at least 9 kilometers around to cross over in vehicles. Quite a hassle. Even though this bridge is meant for pedestrians, the motorcycle guys like to think that they own the road, honking at everyone to get out of their way, which really bugs me. Sometimes they don't even slow down and just bump into someone, and they just kept on driving like nothing happened. Bangkok is kind of like this too, with motorcycles driving on footpaths. You'd think that I would get used to the bullshit living there, but nah. I get really frustrated. Alright, enough of my mini rant. Let's enjoy this amazing view of the Ganges River. And back to finding a place to sleep. This must be the place. Guess what? I got the last bet available. Apparently this place is always full of travelers coming through. They just recently got voted the 16th on the best accommodation award or something like that from TripAdvisor. It's a very nice and cozy spot where there's always something going on with the community there and plenty of new friends to meet. The hostel has many shared dorms and private rooms depending on how much you want to spend. What I thought was really cool too was the game changing blinds for you to have some privacy which a lot of places do not have. That's not my feet by the way, I just borrowed the image from the internet. Also the hostel has a very nice view of the Ganga. So yeah, check out Shiv Chakti should you ever be in Rishikesh. Their amazing staff will take really good care of you. Anyways, please follow me in the next episode where I will take you exploring around Rishikesh. And thank you for watching.